forward to what he's done for us. We're, we're looking this morning at redemption. Uh, I've been trying over the past few months to cover some doctrinal issues. And uh, you know, there's a lot of areas of salvation, I- individual areas that, uh, you know, we, we believe in salvation. But there's a, there's a lot involved in that. Uh, faith and grace and justification and sanctification and you know, a, a lot of different Bible truths. And, and here's another one. And what a blessed one it is. Uh, I've really enjoyed uh, preparing uh, this week. Redemption. Redemption's right through the Bible. Uh, the definition is, is probably different than you might expect. Uh, when I think of redeemed or you know, redeeming something, I just think of buying something. <clears throat> but the word actually has to do with buying it back. And, and it, it means to pay a ransom, uh, to deliver or set free, uh, redeem. Uh, Israel, when, uh, when they were in Egypt, they were so glad that God redeemed them. God brought them out. And uh, when, when God was sending Moses to, uh, back to Egypt, uh, he said to him in uh, Exodus 6 and verse 6, Wherefore, say unto the children of Israel, I am the Lord, and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians. I will rid you out of their bondage, and I will redeem you with a stretched out arm and with great judgments. His promise was, I'll redeem you. And and that's exactly what what he did. Uh, They often spoke of it. They were were so glad that God redeemed them. In uh, the Psalms, for instance, uh, they wrote, He saved them from the hand of him that hated them and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. In Psalm 107 and uh, verse 2, they said, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Uh, That was a theme that that Israel just really rejoiced in. Uh, Bought back people. It was interesting that God put them in Egypt to make them a people, but then he redeemed them. He, He brought them out. One of the things that redemption involves is blood. Uh, you know, like we read there in, in first, first Peter, we're not redeemed by corruptible things, but by, but by the precious blood of Christ. And uh, when God was bringing the nation of Israel out of Egypt, one of the things he instituted was the Passover, where each family had to, to kill a lamb and take the blood and put it on the doorposts. And that was part of their redemption. It was the blood. And, uh, you know, that's that's the pattern right through Scripture. And especially as you get into the New Testament when you, when you see the reality of it. But redemption also had a very practical side. Uh, there were people, you know, they didn't have Social Security. Um, they didn't have what's Link and, you know, all these, these things. Uh, if, if you got in trouble financially, you might have to become a, a servant. And uh, one of the ways you got out of that One of the ways you were rescued from that was a kinsman redeemer would redeem you, would buy you out of of that that poverty. It's explained quite a bit in in Leviticus 25. We're kind of moving through a couple of things uh, just by way of introduction here. Uh, The the word redeemer is, in the Old Testament, is translated sometimes kinsman, sometimes redeemer, sometimes kinsman redeemer. And uh, very practical because... You know, if if you were in trouble financially and you had a a relative who could help you, uh, they would. Kinsman Redeemer. Uh, They had to be willing. They had to be able. You know, some might be willing and not able. Some might be able and not willing. (laughs) Uh, But they also had to be qualified. They had to be a a kinsman. Uh, In Leviticus 25, 25, for instance, he says, If thy brother be waxen poor and hath sold away some of his possessions... And if any of his kin come to redeem it, then shall he redeem them which his brother sold. Uh, later on, he talks about not just their possessions, but uh, in uh, Leviticus 25, 47, he talks about a person selling himself unto the stranger. Uh, there was times when they, they just became servants. Verse 48, after that he is sold, he may be redeemed again. One of his brethren may redeem him. And it talks about the different uh, relations. So it was, it was a very practical uh, part of life. Uh, but they had to be willing, they had to be able, and they had to be qualified. The greatest illustration of this is found in the book of Ruth. You can turn there if you'd like. It's a very small book, just four chapters. 
If you've never read it, read it today. It'll only take you a few minutes. It's a love story. Uh, it's, it's exciting. And it's about redemption. It's about the kinsman redeemer. If you don't know the story of Ruth, uh, the, the actual main character is Naomi. <laughs> uh, she was a lady of Israel, a woman of Israel. And her and her husband and their, their children, their two boys, uh, there was hard times in Israel. Things were going bad, and so they decided to move to Moab. I was looking on my map. That's just at the... Uh, in Israel, you've got the Dead Sea, that body of water that looks kind of like a mitt. Uh, to the right of the Dead Sea is Moab. So it wasn't a long way, but they left Israel, went to Moab. Well, as it sometimes happens, things went from bad to worse. Uh, when they went to Moab, her husband died. Uh, her sons married women in Moab, and then her sons died. So here she is in a foreign country. Uh, her husband, her sons are dead. She has two daughter-in-laws. And she hears then that things have gotten better back in Israel. And so she decides to go back to Israel. Well, in, in the meanwhile, she would have lost her property. Y you know, things, things keep going on. And uh, she told her daughter-in-laws, you just stay here. You're women of Moab. You just stay here. I'm, I'm going to go back to Israel. Well, if you know the story, Ruth said, and it's a famous saying, entreat me not to leave thee. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. I, I think that's a, uh, an important statement in Ruth. I think Ruth had become converted. She'd become a believer in God. And uh, she wouldn't leave Naomi. And when they got back to Israel, people said, oh, there's Ruth. I, I'm sorry. There's, I'll probably say the wrong name several times here. There's Naomi. And she said, don't call me Naomi. Call me Mara. That means bitter. Yeah, she'd been through a lot. And she, but as they got back to Israel, one of the best things she had going for her was Ruth. Ruth was a hard worker. Ruth loved her. And uh, one of the laws there was that you could glean. When they did the harvest, they had to leave a bit. They couldn't, they couldn't harvest the corners, and if they dropped something, they had to leave it there. And gleaners could come in and pick up the part of the harvest that was left over. And boy, Ruth was there every day, gleaning. And the Bible uses the word, the word hap. It was her hap to go to the field of Boaz. Well, there was no hap about it. God was in it. And, well, to kind of cut a long story short, I think Boaz fell in love with this hard-working woman full of character and probably not too bad looking either, I'm not sure. But uh, as, as time went, went by... Uh, Naomi pointed out to Ruth, I'm just reading here from uh, Ruth 2 and verse 20, Naomi, Naomi said unto her, the man is near of kin unto us, one of our next kinsmen. And uh, then later, Naomi asks Ruth, tells Ruth to ask Boaz to be their kinsman redeemer. They, they needed rescuing. And he was a near relative. Uh, later on in... in um, Let's see here, chapter 3, verse 18. Uh, she, she's gone and she's asked. And then uh, Naomi says to her, Sit still, my daughter, until thou know how the matter will fall. For the man will not be in rest until he have finished the thing this day. I love that verse. <laughs> and she says, Ruth, you've turned it over to Boaz. He's not going to rest until he's worked it out. And sure enough. Now, if you know the story, there was another man who was a closer relative. So he had to talk to that man first. In, in chapter 4, uh, he says to him uh, in verse 4, If thou wilt redeem, redeem it. And the main thing was the property. But if thou wilt not redeem it, then tell me that I may know, for there is none to redeem it besides thee, and I'm after thee, and he said, I will redeem it. So he tells him, here's this situation. Uh, if you'll redeem it, you do it. If you won't, I will. He says, I'll do it. Then said Boaz, Boaz was very crafty about this, I think. What, by the way, he says, what day thou buyest the field of the hand of Naomi, thou must buy it also of Ruth, the Moabitess, the wife of the dead, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. Oh, by the way, when you get the property, you also have to marry the, the daughter-in-law. They had another law about that, you know, raising up an inheritance. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it. <laughs> he wasn't in it for that. You know, as I read that, I thought, isn't that just like the devil? He wants your property, but he doesn't want you, you know? 
And, uh, but Boaz is a picture of Jesus Christ and redemption. I love how, I don't know, the whole the story is that he's, they're, they're harvesting, or what's, what's it called, uh, uh, doing the, the crop, you know. They're, they're in the, the, uh, the shed there, and all the men are, are there, and, and she goes at night while he's asleep, and she pulls his coat over. When he, wake, he, he wakes up, and she, that's when she says, we, we need you to be our kinsman redeemer, to extend your, your mercy over us. You know, what a beautiful picture of the Lord Jesus as we come to him, as our, our kinsman redeemer. And, uh, you know, Boaz works it out, and he, he redeems uh, Ruth and Naomi. All she had to do was ask. And you know, what a wonderful picture of redemption. Uh, here's Boaz. Uh, he was qualified. He was willing. He was able, just like Jesus. Jesus is our, our kinsman redeemer. Well, the Old Testament... Those are pictures. Those are, are types. Jesus Christ and the New Testament is the reality. Jesus is, uh, well, for instance, John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus, you know, all the Old Testament, they'd been killing sheep, lambs, to shed the blood. When he sees Jesus, he says, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. He's saying, here's the reality. All of that's been a type, a figure, a picture. Here's the real thing. Here's the Lamb of God. And in Jesus Christ, we have the Redeemer. And what a blessing it is. Now listen, no animal blood can take care of our sin. Now I know they, they did sacrifices in the Old Testament, but the, the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 9, that was a figure or a picture. Hebrews 9, verses 8 and 9. A figure uh, for the time then present. And then he says in Hebrews 9, 12, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in, once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. And what a blessing it is, uh, by the blood of Jesus Christ, that we're redeemed. Uh, the picture, it was wonderful, and, and it, was a, it was a blessing. It was by faith that they, they did those things. They knew that those were pictures of, of the Christ that would, that would come. Jesus Christ is the Redeemer. And you know, as you, as you think about him this morning, he fulfills every part of the kinsman Redeemer. Number one, he was willing. Yeah, isn't it amazing that Jesus would come knowing that he was coming to suffer and die for us? He said in John 10, talking about his life, he said, No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. Christ said, I, this is not something being done against my will. He says, I'm, I'm doing this by choice. Titus 2.14 says, he gave himself. He gave himself. In Romans 3.24, it says, we are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. It's freely by his grace. That grace has to do with being a gift. He gave himself for us. Uh, there's a verse in Galatians, Galatians 3.13, that says, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. Redeemed. Being made a curse for us. You know, when Jesus came, he knew that he would die on the cross. Uh, he knew all the things that would, hit, that would happen, uh, and yet he was willing. Not only was he willing, he was able. You know, in the Old Testament, there might have been times when a relative, a kinsman would have been quite willing to have redeemed someone, but they, they themselves were in financial trouble. But Jesus is not like that. <laughs> uh, see, he's, he's able. Ephesians 1, 7 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Uh, like we read in, in 1 Peter, uh, we're not redeemed with corruptible things, things that pass away but with the precious blood of Christ. His blood is precious. It's one of a kind. He's the only Savior, the only one. In uh, 1 Peter 1, I think it's, it's good to note uh, verse 20. He points out, Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. See, God had planned all along for Jesus to be the Redeemer. 
and he gave picture after picture. If you look at the, at the uh, temple and the tabernacle, those are all pictures of Christ. You look at the offerings and feasts, those are all pictures of Christ. Uh, even the physical things, uh, they're pictures of Christ. You know, the furniture in the, in the temple and, and so on. But in Christ, you have the reality. And the reason those pictures could be so good was that God had the original in heaven with him. <laughs> he could look at the original and, and make a, a picture of it. Uh, that's why God is so accurate with, with his pictures, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. See, he's the, he's the real thing. He's able. He's able to forgive sins. He's willing to forgive sins. And he's qualified. He is the kinsman redeemer. God became a man. Now, Hebrews 2.11 says, Both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. The sanctifier and the sanctified. We're one. We're, we're, we're human. You know, God became man. He's not ashamed to call us brethren. Man, that's precious. I, I'm so glad... Jesus is not ashamed to, to be my Savior. Amen. Yeah, you and I might have had that attitude, but not him. He became one of us. In fact, Philippians, the Bible puts it this way, he made himself of no reputation. Well, I'll tell you, some of the times you'll get the angriest is when somebody attacks your reputation. Not Jesus. He laid it aside for us. Made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became <laughs> obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. But Jesus had to be a man. He had to be a, a human being. He had to be a, a perfect man. And in fact, he had to be the Messiah. God had been saying all through the Old Testament who this one would be and where he would come from and who his relatives would be and what city he'd be born in, you know, uh, fact after fact. And Jesus had to fulfill every one of them. And he, he did. Jesus Christ is the kinsman redeemer. He's the kinsman redeemer for every person who's ever lived. He's the kinsman redeemer for you, <laughs> for me. Let me ask you, have you asked him to help you? You, you know, that, that beautiful record of uh, uh, Ruth asking Boaz, extend your, you know, will you help us? Will you be our, our redeemer? All she had to do was ask. You need a redeemer. You know, the Bible says we're born separated from God. Uh, that's hard, isn't it? And yet it's true. Visiting one of the, the families yesterday, a little baby. Oh, they're so little. <laughs> they're so cute. Little Angus is his name. You know, tiny little features and so on. But he's born a sinner. They'll never have to teach him how to sin. But they will have to teach him that he needs a Savior. You need a Redeemer. The Bible says the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. Lost through sin. Jesus Christ is willing. He's able. He's qualified. He's the only one who's qualified. Listen, the devil will throw up all kinds of saviors to attract you. But none of them are qualified. He wants you to say, oh, I'm good enough. God should like me. Listen, God loves you, but you're still not good enough. <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll try and get your eyes on these false saviors, people who say they're the Messiah, people who say they're God. I met a, God, I met a guy who said his name was God. Let me get this right. I met a guy who said he was God, and his name was Bill. <laughs> it wasn't me, <laughs> and it wasn't God either. <laughs> You know, there's all kinds of weird things that, that will try and attract us away. But there's only one Redeemer. And let me tell you, everyone who believes in Jesus Christ are redeemed. If you've trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, you're one of the redeemed. You've been bought back. You've been bought with a price. Have you ever thought about all the blessings that involves? <laughs> I, I, I can only list a few today, but... You know, at salvation, when you trust Christ as your Savior, number one, you're forgiven. God promises that. In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. Uh, Titus 2.14, who gave Himself for us that He might redeem us from all iniquity. Not just some, all. 
and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. We're cleansed. We're purified. In Hebrews 9, 12, he says, Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered into the holy place, once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. We're saved and secure. It's eternal life. Not based on, on, on anything we've done, but based on who he is. He's the redeemer. In 1 Corinthians 6, 19, he says, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you? We have security. We have, we have him with us. We're not alone. And he's promised, I'll never leave you or forsake you. This happens at salvation when we're redeemed. Galatians 4 says we're adopted to redeem them that are under the law that we might receive the adoption of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying, Abba, Father, wherefore thou art no more a servant but a son. What a blessing. At, at salvation you become a, a child of the king. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. At salvation, uh, you get uh, empowered and loved and helped. <laughs> uh, the Lord, the Redeemer, takes over and uh, uh, takes uh, control of, of your destiny. The, the list could go on and on. We receive these at salvation. And in eternity, we look forward to the redemption of our bo very body. You know, someday God is going to uh, take us out of this world and, and put us with all the redeemed of, of eternity. Jesus said in Luke 21, Lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. You know, we don't experience everything about redemption in this life. Some of it has to do with eternity. And Jesus will take us to himself. Maybe by death. Maybe by his coming again. Aren't you looking forward to Jesus coming again? Uh, won't you be glad to be rid of this old world? But listen, we need to be busy now taking people with us. They need to be redeemed. And Jesus said, someday in heaven, uh, we'll sing a new song saying, Thou art worthy. And uh, we'll sing with the, with the redeemed. The redeemed, he says, out of every kindred and tongue and people and nations. Well, what a blessing to be a redeemed person. And the Bible says, not by works of righteousness, which we've done. You know, the world tries to present religion. Oh, if you do this and you do that and you pay this and pay that, Maybe you'll get to heaven. God says it's by the Redeemer. It's by one. That's Jesus Christ. Not by works of righteousness, which we've done, but according to His mercy. Jesus is the Redeemer. He's willing, He's able, He's qualified, and He offers redemption unto all and upon all them that, that believe. He paid the price. He's willing and able to save you. The question this morning you need to answer is, are you redeemed? Have you, like Ruth, come to the Redeemer and said, will you redeem me? Will you help me? All she had to do is ask. All you have to do is ask. For by grace are you saved through faith. That not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. It's only received by faith. Uh, if you're a Christian this morning, if you've trusted Christ, you are redeemed. Man, that's precious. <laughs> uh, don't let that, that truth uh, escape from you. you know, don't, don't let it get away from you. Don't let the devil lie to you. If you're trusting Christ, you're redeemed. He's the Redeemer. If you've never been saved, you can do it today. You can be redeemed today. Why would you not? And why would you wait? Uh, what would be the purpose of, of not accepting the redemption that's found only in Jesus Christ, our great Redeemer? We're going to sing a, a song this morning, Now I Belong to Jesus. You may not be able to sing that. I, I don't know your heart. The Lord knows your heart. But if you're not able to sing, Now I Belong to Jesus, now's the time to, to come to Him and ask Him to save you. He, he says, all that come to Him, he, He'll in no wise cast out. He, he's ready, willing, and able to receive you. And I would encourage you this morning, uh, if you've trusted Christ, glory in your redemption. If you haven't trusted Christ, Trust Him today. Now, the song we're going to sing is page 298, Now I Belong to Jesus. Get Azrael to come and lead us in this. I'll be down.